Welcome to another team selection video ahead of game week three. I'm going to be discussing what my transfer plans are. I only have one free transfer. I did the Haaland to Kane switcheroo from game weeks one to two, and it hasn't really worked out so far. And I'm also going to be discussing the best captaincy options. Do we go for Erling Haaland away to Newcastle, or are there better captaincy options out there? We're going to be discussing that in this video. And without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Despite his heroics in game week one, Aaron Ramsdale failed to keep a clean sheet against Leicester, Saliba scoring an own goal, and then James Madison scoring from a tight angle, and Aaron Ramsdale should have done much better there. So only one point, and he hasn't made so many saves so far this season. I think he's only made four in two matches, which is slightly concerning because that was a huge part of why he was such an impressive option when he started the season at 4.5 million in the last campaign. But I still think he's a good option and one of the best at 5 million. But then you look at Edouard Mendy, Nick Pope, Jose Sarr with his incredible performance, and there's many other goalkeepers that are doing very well like Edison. So Ramsdale isn't the pick of the bunch right now, but at least he has that clean sheet already in the bag. And Alisson, for example, has probably been the most disappointing goalkeeper in this FPL season so so far but one point for Ramsdale not much more that needs to be said there and he has been a bit suspect in the last few months leading from the last campaign as well but I think you can get things up for sure I mean in the gimmick one performance against Crystal Palace he made two incredible saves and he definitely has the potential to be a great five million goalkeeper Despite the Liverpool fullbacks disappointing once again, Reese, James and Cancelo were clutch for the second week running and Cancelo notched a first double-digit return of any defender for me this season with a fantasy assist and 11 FPL points. It's a very underrated option. A lot of people look at him and say, where are the attacking returns? But he got 11 assists last season and he scored one goal with an XG of over five. I think the goals will definitely ramp up eventually. And as for Rhys James, he's arguably one of the best finishers from the defenders at our disposal. And he has the most goal contributions of any defender since last season with another goal against Spurs. And he is looking so sharp. He started the game as a right centre back, but during the game, there were some tactical switches and he went back to his favoured right wing back position. He put in some great crosses, including for Kai Havertz, who should have scored. And he took matters into his own hands when he scored. Robertson has been probably the most underwhelming. Trent at least got a bonus point uh, despite conceding to Crystal Palace. And it shows how well he is playing overall. But having the two Liverpool fullbacks has definitely been underwhelming. Even Luis Diaz, for example, those who went for the Colombian are profiting from that. But those Robertson, Trent and Salah... Maybe not as much, despite Salah doing very well in game week one. Game week two was an absolute disaster for Liverpool, other than those who had Luis Diaz. And let's not even mention Nunez, who got sent off, and Joachim Anderson did a very good job in terms of rattling him, and Nunez should have reacted much better. But this is still not a bad defensive line. We're going to go on to the midfielders now, and you're going to see what a poor set of players they have been in game week two. So only one return from the midfielders at my disposal. Martinelli scoring for the second game running against Leicester. And he was arguably man of the match, even over Gabriel Jesus, who did an incredible job as well. Mohamed Salah blanked, which was fairly surprising. And I think there is the stat that he has never scored in game week two. So it does continue. And as for Pedro Neto, he blanked as well. And I don't know how he didn't score. He had pretty much an open goal. And Leon Bailey started from the bench. And he is also adding to our misery. He went down in price overnight to 4.9 million. And our patience is definitely wearing thin at the moment. And I don't really have a great midfield list, be quite frank. Salah and Martinelli, I'm very happy with. But the rest looks very poor. My fifth midfielder is Andreas Pereira, who's also a Dow at the moment. He picked up a knock, I think. And if you look at the squad overall, the defence is good. The goalkeeper is good. But then the defenders themselves are underperforming, especially the Liverpool fullbacks. Martinelli and Salah doing well. But the other two, and Andres Pereira aren't really going to offer me that much consistency or points. But let's now move on to the forwards and my captain for game week two. As many people did, I captain Erling Haaland in game week two. Gabra Jesus, though, was the one who stole the show with 19 points, two goals and two assists, maximum bonus points. And he should have scored more goals, to be honest. And he missed some very good chances, but he still produced that huge return. And now I have gone up in rank from around 3.2 million to 2.1, but I'm still outside that top 2 million. I thought I'd break into it after the Liverpool game, but how wrong was I? And Crystal Palace did a very good job tactically on Liverpool. I have 128 points overall, and I scored 67 in game week two, which was an improvement on game week one, but still not quite good enough. And pretty much the main reason why is because my midfield is quite weak and my Liverpool fullbacks are underperforming. Otherwise, 
I'd be in a much better position, of course. The Kane and Haaland switcheroo hasn't helped things at all either. You can join the league, by the way. Check the link in the description below. The league code is 86 ex 3 j and you can also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content we're very close to 12,000 subscribers and also smash the like button let's try to get this to over 200 likes it'd be massively appreciated but there you go you've seen my rank you've seen how i did in game week two and now what are my plans for game week three what am i going to do with leon bailey and am i going to sell andy robertson Despite Ward playing Southampton at home, and I think that's a great fixture for the Foxes, I have opted for Aaron Ramsdale in goal once again against his former club, Bournemouth. And the last time Arsenal faced Bournemouth at their stadium, I'm pretty sure that Bournemouth ended up winning the match and it was one of Arsene Wenger's last matches in charge of Arsenal. But I think Arsenal are in much better shape at the moment. Bournemouth are still looking pretty decent. Yes, they lost 4-0 to City, but they had an incredible start against Aston Villa in game week one. And I think they could cause some problems for Arsenal and possibly score. I'm not expecting a clean sheet actually in this game, but there is still the possibility and the bookmakers will all tell you that Arsenal have one of the best chances of any team of keeping a clean sheet in game week three. But I'm going for Aaron Ramsdale. There's not much more that needs to be said with the goalkeepers. It's pretty much always going to be Aaron Ramsdale in goal for me. Now let's move on to the defenders. I'm going for a back five here and Matty Cash picked up an injury but he kind of came out and as reported by the Birmingham Mail he's pretty much saying he's fine and it was just cramp to be honest and I think if he is fine I'm going to probably start him over the likes of Andres Pereira, Pedro Neto and Leon Bailey but it's definitely going to be between all of those for some starts in my team and I'm just not a big fan of my midfield apart from Martin Leon Salah I'd easily and happily bench every single one of the others. With Leon Bailey though if he got the starts I'd actually think he's a decent option around 4.9 million but the problem now is that he's not nailed and Aston Villa scored the goals when Leon Bailey was on the bench but Cash is definitely nailed and I almost missed out on big points there you know Aston Villa were on the cusp of keeping a clean sheet Cash was first on my bench and that last minute own goal pretty much by Luca Dean I was very thankful for actually because I would have missed out on five points because I started with Leon Bailey. Trent and Robertson away to United. I think it's a great fixture for them and I could see a clean sheet for Liverpool, especially with the way that Man United are playing. Ten Hag could eventually fix things, but it's going to take some time and a lot of patience required, not only by the fans, but also the board and the players themselves. And despite Liverpool's struggles, I still think they're a much better team and the league table maybe isn't a fair reflection of the quality that Liverpool have. They have struggled a lot with injuries and they're not definitely at the optimum level, but I can see them slowly climbing up the table and competing for the very top spaces in the league as for City away to Newcastle it is a tough fixture I think and Newcastle could score there but Joao Cancelo has a good record against the tune and I think he could get a clean sheet or an attacking return if he gets both then we're in for another great haul by the Portuguese fullback and Rhys James away to Leeds I have to say once again it's not a great fixture right now Leeds are looking pretty good they did bottle a 2-0 lead to Southampton but they have looked fairly solid this season compared to the last season under Marcelo Bielsa and Chelsea still aren't fully at it. I have to say though Chelsea were very impressive against Spurs and they deserve to win and probably keep a clean sheet to be honest. Both goals were very debatable and probably shouldn't have stood but they did and in the end Rhys James wasn't able to get the first double digit return of the season but I see it coming very soon. Maybe not against Leeds but the fixture is still looking very good on paper. I would just question how good the fixture is right now compared to the seasons gone by. Now, as you can see, compared to Gaming 2, where everyone in my team was pretty much at home, now it's the complete opposite. Everyone in my squad is away from home. And I think that does play a part to a certain extent. Even someone like Ramsdale away to Bournemouth, the chances of a clean sheet are definitely much lower when he's away from home compared to at home. Although Arsenal have actually struggled a lot at the Emirates to keep those clean sheets. But there you go. I'm not expecting too much in terms of clean sheets and all of that jazz in the back line, but you never know. And I definitely have the quality with those four fullbacks you see, and they could definitely produce the goods. I would keep Andy Robertson if you can. I know there's a big temptation to downgrade him and then upgrade one of your midfielders like Bailey all the way to Madison or Diaz. And I think that's definitely a great option in the long term, but I think Robertson will produce the goods in the next few game weeks. And Liverpool, once those players come back like Kanati and Matip, they will be in a much better place and they're going to get those clean sheets. As things stand, I am going for Andres Pereira over Neto and Leon Bailey. And with the Jamaican, I just don't expect them to start against Crystal Palace. Then it's really a straight shootout between Neto and Andres Pereira. And because of the fixture, I am going for the Brazilian. However, 
He is flagged at the moment with a knock, but I think he'll be completely fine, and that's why he's not flagged here on screen. Salah and Martinelli speak for themselves. They're going to start every single week. Once I add a bit of depth to the midfield positions, there could be the odd occasion where I consider benching Martinelli, but I think in most cases, I'd be very happy to start him. The form he's in is great, and I think he's only going to improve from here on out. And Salah is a great captaincy shout, but we're going to discuss at the very end who I'm deciding to captain. But from the midfielders, I would still put Salah at the very forefront of the best captaincy options, facing Man United, who are struggling even more so than Liverpool. And I think this could be a great, great chance for Salah to start picking it up again after a very, very disappointing game week two. And the strikers are Gabriel Jesus and Erling Haaland, as most people have, to be fair, at this stage of the season. Haaland, away to Newcastle, will probably be a very popular captaincy option this week. And whilst I think he'll do well, the same goes for Kevin De Bruyne, I think their ceiling might be a bit more limited. And actually, Gabriel Jesus could be the one to captain over Erling Haaland. Away to Bournemouth, Arsenal looking very dynamic with a forward line. They should have scored more goals against Leicester. They could have scored six or seven even in that match. And I think Bournemouth, despite the fact that I think they'll cause some problems, I could see Arsenal scoring a couple of goals themselves. It could be a high scoring game overall, and that's only going to benefit the likes of Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus. Saka has been a bit more defensive in the first two games of the season, and he hasn't really looked at it from an offensive point of view. And Jesus and Martinelli look like the two best Arsenal attackers for sure and if I had to kind of do a top three captaincy options from the players at my disposal it would be Salah, Jesus and Haaland and probably in that order. And that may be a bit of a spoiler, but Salah is my captain at the moment. It is very close between him and Gabriel Jesus, but I think I'm going to go for the Egyptian just because of the fixture. Man United are looking absolutely awful, and that Brentford game kind of cemented him as the captain for me. Yes, the performance against Palace was a bit underwhelming, and Liverpool didn't fill me with confidence, but I think they will recover and produce a very good response and also get one over on their old rivals. Erling Haaland is still a great captaincy shout, don't get me wrong, and if you are feeling like City will score a couple past Newcastle then there's nothing wrong with going for Erling Haaland but I think Salah will go a bit under the radar by some yes he's going to be very popular after the Brentford versus United game but before that I don't think anyone was really considering it and everyone was just going for Erling Haaland and I still think a lot of casual players will just look at the fixture on paper and say oh it might be a tough game for Salah and it doesn't look that good so I'm going to go for Erling Haaland but I would argue Newcastle is much tougher at the moment and as you can see on my bench Ward is there with Neto first on my bench Bailey second and Archer third and that's another thing that has happened as a result of Aston Villa changing system and playing two strikers with Danny Ings and Ollie Watkins that also means that Archer is probably going to get fewer opportunities to start or to get some minutes off the bench which is what he mainly can get because Leon Bailey will be the first choice to come on for either Danny Ings or Ollie Watkins up front but that's just the way I see it and either way he's just a 4.5 million option on my bench but I have to say the captaincy option is probably the biggest thing to discuss this week and what to do with the likes of Robertson Neto and Leon Bailey I would keep Neto happily for the next few game weeks but with these Aston Villa assets we can slowly start to get rid of them if you have two free transfers I would try to downgrade a certain position it could be Matty Cash for example to a 4.5 million defender and then you can use those funds to upgrade Leon Bailey I have 0.5 million in the bank and this team costs 99.9 million so my overall squad value is 100.4 million and I could for example with two free transfers be able to do Bailey to Rodrigo and that's something I discussed in the transfer tips video the buy hold sell and skip be sure to check that out as well and if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's get this video to over 200 likes and we're very close to 12,000 subscribers and you can join me for the deadline stream very soon as well as the reaction stream I am having some issues with the software that I'm using and whilst I don't have a clear-cut solution to it yet I'm still working on how to improve things I thought it was the internet and I was going crazy at it but in the end it's all down to the software so I need to find that solution and we can have some smooth streams like we did all of the entirety of last season we had so many there and it's always a pleasure talking to you you can follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and you can also become a patron or a channel member the links are in the description below and you can also join the fpl league all of that good stuff is there so all the best for gaming free good luck with the rest of the fpl season and i'll see you next time